on guys welcome back to the channel so you guys have run up a video that i've done a really long time ago like over a year ago you guys are like absolutely killing that video it's got like 15,000 views on it and the title of that video is what i would do differently if i built another wjg so in today's video i'm gonna do a similar video for you guys it's not gonna be tom saviano over there <laughs> so I'm not going to do that exact video, but what I am going to do for you guys is five, five common problems with the 99 to 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee, specifically the four liter, but this will pertain to the four seven also. I'm just not going to go into depth of the engine issues that the four seven has. If you guys know, you know, the four seven is a eh motor. Some of them last over 200 K with no problems. Some of them don't make it to hundred K before they're pulled out and replaced. So if you know, you know, but let's hop right into this and we will go over five common issues with the 99 to 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Guys, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I have owned this Jeep Grand Cherokee for about 10 years. It's been with me for a very, very long time and i've come to realize what stuff these things decide that they're gonna break and what stuff they won't break and yeah i'm just gonna go over five things that i know right off the top of my head that are common issues with all of them um a couple of these things that might pertain only to the four liter which is what is in this jeep but yeah so guys number one on this list and i say number one because this is literally number one for the four liter this specific thing has left me on the side of the road two or three times since I've owned this Jeep in the past 10 years. But the good news is, is there are ways around it. So what I am talking about is the crank sensor, which is located on top of the bell housing all the way back here. You got to get it from the bottom. It's an 11 millimeter bolt. You need a whole bunch of swivels and sockets and ratchet and everything to get it out but it can be done. I've done it in parking lots when the Jeep wouldn't start on me. So typically when this fails, this is this more so pertains to the four liter, but these have common crank sensor issues. So when it fails, you'll either get no bus on your odometer readout where it says your mileage, it'll say no bus or your Jeep just won't start. So just really quickly, I went to Harbor Freight one time in a snowstorm and I parked the Jeep, Jeep ran fine went, grabbed something in Harbor Freight, came back out, my Jeep didn't start. So guess what I was doing? I was doing a crank sensor in the parking lot of Harbor Freight, which was absolutely terrible. I was laying in like a foot of snow, but it is what it is. It's a very, very common issue with pretty much any four liter Jeep. The pretty much the best fix you're gonna do for that is an OEM Mopar sensor, which I believe recently they stopped making them. So if you could find one, I would highly suggest getting one. I always keep an extra one under the backseat of my Jeep. I also keep the tools in the Jeep to do the crank sensor if it does fail. It's just something that I've learned over the years, something that you guys should know if you're looking to buy one of these 9904 WJs. Um, but yeah. So I do have to tell you guys, honestly, this is one of the best motors that pretty much ever came in a Jeep. The 2.5 and the 4 liter, they're pretty much the same motor minus two cylinders on the four cylinder, but they are a great, great engine. This Jeep in front of you has a poor man stroker. It's a 4.6 liter technically. And um, pretty soon, if you guys don't follow my channel, this is getting a GT35 turbo put on it which I am going to do. I'm going to film for everybody. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely hit the subscribe button down below because you're not going to want to miss it. I'm probably going to have to tune it myself and everything. So it should be a very, very interesting build series. But yeah. So second problem that I know of off the top of my head is going to be valve cover leaks, specifically for the four liter. So these valve covers do leak very, very frequently out of the back corner all the way back here. 
It is more so with the cork gasket than the rubber gasket. The newer Jeeps use the rubber gasket. So the one you're looking at has a rubber gasket, but they do still have issues. They still do it. And it's just something to know. It's a very common issue. A lot of the times, if you see an oil leak, it's either gonna be a valve cover or a rear main seal, which we might as well put those two together because they kind of go hand in hand. So the rear main seal on this is a two piece seal and they do leak very, very frequently. You'll notice oil at the bottom of your bell housing and you'll know instantly. You'll either see oil up top if it's the valve cover or you see oil down below if it's the rear main seal. All right guys, so number three, I'm gonna say rust. Now I'm gonna tell you exactly where these things like to rot out, what's very common areas. So we're gonna start at the front and we're gonna work our way to the back. So in the front, any Dana 30 axle, the spring perches on the axle down below right there. I currently have like three inch exhaust pipe welded in there as my spring perch, but they rot out. So typically you'll find this when you decide you're gonna do a lift kit on these, you know, at the worst possible time when you already have all this work to do and then you find that's rotted out. The good news is, is Iron Rock Off-Road makes a spring perch repair kit for them and it's not crazy expensive. It's about $55, I wanna say. So that's just something to know. If you're gonna buy one, look in these areas. Um, also to the rocker panels, all the way down. They like to rot out. I currently have mine cut out on the other side and this one's gonna get cut out very soon because I'm gonna do rock sliders on this. Um, weld in ones to get rid of the rocker panels altogether. But the reason these rockers rot out is because Chrysler thought it was a good idea to put foam in the rockers, which creates moisture trapped and it rots your rockers out. So that's another area to look for you guys. And then the third area that I know off the top of my head is if it has a sunroof. I don't have a sunroof, so I don't have this issue. But if it does have a sunroof, your sunroof drains are by the rear quarter panel. So a lot of the times you find these Jeeps, this whole rear quarter panel will be rotted out all up in here. Mine is 100% rust free, it's solid. My Jeep's kind of a bad example because this was taken care of. I know the previous owner and I've owned it for 10 years and I've taken care of it. So mine's kind of a bad example to show you guys this, but I do have like the rocker rot and stuff. But if you have a sunroof, you're gonna wanna check these rockers on both sides. That's where your sunroof drains. And then the last thing, number four, is going to be the gas tank skid plate, which if you could see, mine is rotted out. I do have to replace it. Good news is, is they do sell just the skid plate. It's about $230, I wanna say. You can get it on a bunch of websites. Just Google search the skid plate for a Jeep WJ and you'll find it. All right, so problem number four. I think that's what we're on, right guys? Four, five? No, we're definitely on four. Problem number four is going to be your windows. Now this is gonna to pertain to all 9904 Grand Cherokees. Very common issue with them is either the wires break in the boots. It could be the passenger side or the driver's side, more common on the driver's side. So the fix for that is obviously to repair your wires. What'll happen is the windows will work with like the door closed, they won't work with it open or they won't work at all. And then the other thing with the windows is the master switch here likes to go out. Now mine currently has an issue, a slight issue where to get the passenger rear window, the one back there to roll down. Sometimes I have to play with the window lock button and then it will roll down eventually, but it's because my master switch is going bad. It's not a problem with the wiring or anything because it does work, but you just have to mess with the, the window lock switch. So that's just something to keep in mind. Check that out. This, this is all stuff that you could talk people down on the price of these Jeeps. Like, to be honest with you guys, this is a great vehicle. It really is. And you can get them for a really good price. I feel like I should have done like 10 problems because I have to like combine things together because there's like a lot of just stupid little things that these have. So my fifth and final problem that I want to go over, which I did a permanent repair on mine. Uh, I highly suggest doing what I did. Um, Inferno Fabrications makes the kit. It's going to be to get rid of your coil rail. Now, if you guys have seen the four liter in the newer Jeeps, they have a coil rail that runs along here. As you can see, mine is not like that no more. I have a coil pack, I have spark plug wires, obviously I have spark plugs, so on and so forth. This is a permanent solution to that. Those coil rails do like to go bad. They, they like to crack in between cylinders and stuff. You have three coil packs on it. There's one here, one here, and one in the back. They do crack over time. You'll get random misfires. You'll get like cylinder three and four misfires. They'll always be together because two cylinders run on one coil. So if your coils crack, it's gonna misfire on two cylinders. So 
I just want to say that. And then the other thing that I want to say is if we come right down here, right behind this headlight over back in this way, there's a fan controller. I believe this is only going to pertain to the four liter, but those do go bad. They, they get hot and they stop working. So that's another thing that you're definitely going to want to check out. Just make sure the cooling fan's working. Make sure the coil pack's good. Make sure there's no misfires. Check for rot. You know, any, any way you would check any car. But these are the specific areas to look for just off the top of my head. Um, but yeah. So in no way, shape, or form, guys, am I trying to shy you away from buying a 9904 WJ Grand Cherokee, especially with the 4 liter. They are phenomenal vehicles. They're comfortable. They ride great. Gas mileage, if you leave it stock, really isn't that bad. It's doable for a daily. They're extremely, extremely reliable vehicles. I can guarantee you that. Mine has, I know it doesn't look like it, but mine has over 200,000 miles on it. It has almost 300,000 miles, guys. It has, uh, right now it has 286 and some change. So it is up there. And the only reason it doesn't have the original motor in here is because I blew it up, me. I was the one that blew it up. So it's my fault. It's nothing to do with Chrysler, the Jeep, or the four liter or anything. It was my fault. It would still have the original motor still be going strong because it did run good. So yeah, I'm definitely not trying to shy you guys away from it. I'm trying to just help you guys when I can. Like common issues, if you're gonna buy one, look for these things because that will get you down on the price or whether you don't wanna buy it or wanna buy it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please drop a like up on this video. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, if you want to see more Jeep content, I have plenty of Jeep content coming. It's getting turbocharged, guys. Turbo. It's going to make cool-ass noises. You might as well subscribe to the channel and check it out. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will catch you next Friday, 12 p.m. Peace out.